Hi right, guys, welcome to a camera comparison between the brand new OnePlus 7 Pro, the Galaxy S10 Plus and the Huawei P30 Pro. And right now we're actually recording on the front cameras of each phone, so let me know what you think to the video quality as well as the audio quality. So starting off with rear camera video, the OnePlus is off to a flying start. Its high dynamic range is so capable that it's the only phone where you can distinguish not just the dark water, the green trees, but also the blue in the sky. Also, only the OnePlus and the Samsung can record 4K video at 60 frames per second, the Huawei is limited to 30. For this whole comparison, I've set the Huawei to its smooth colour option, but even then, colours are coming out a little bit funky. Samsung is the most natural in the situation. Stabilisation at 4K resolution, it looks like OnePlus has knocked it out the park. The OnePlus 7 Pro looks even more stable than the P30 Pro, which in itself is even more stable than the S10 Plus. When we turn the resolution down to 1080p, all three phones have incredible stabilisation. The Galaxy S10 Plus moves into its super steady video mode, and the P30 Pro uses its AI features as well to create a similar result. Safe to say, the 7 Pro is at least as good as the other two. Something you will notice on the OnePlus though, is that whilst the phone does come with an ultra-wide camera, you can't use it for video, at least not yet. Even when you can use it, and we will come to this when we talk about photos, it's just not as wide as the other two phones. It can do 117 degrees versus Huawei's 120 versus Samsung's 123 degrees. You might also know that all three phones have a telephoto lens as well. The OnePlus 7 Pro with 3x zoom, S10 Plus with 2x and the Huawei with 5 Bear in mind though that the OnePlus footage looks pretty grainy. It looks like instead of taking video using the telephoto camera, it's actually just cropping in from what the main camera is capturing. All three can record continuous 240 frame per second slow motion, and I was really happy with how it looks on the S10 Plus and the OnePlus 7 Pro. And in fact, you can see that in terms of exposure of the background, OnePlus is even doing it better than Samsung. The Galaxy S10 though does go a step further. It can record bursts of super slow motion 960 frame per second video. The Huawei can too, but it's using a bit of software trickery to achieve it, and it's not true 960 FPS. Okay, as the light starts to dip, this is where it gets really interesting. So we're starting off with a middling lighting scenario. It's not really dark yet, but you can already see that Samsung's footage is already starting to peter off. It's lost a lot of sharpness compared to the other two. If we try zooming in five times on each, I would actually say OnePlus looks better than Huawei. This could be because it seems to use the main sensor as opposed to its telephoto for video, and in this particular case, that helps it. You can also see the noise reduction algorithms as well as the high dynamic range algorithms on the OnePlus really drawing out every bit of detail that the camera is capturing. I was super impressed with this. As we go even darker, you can really tell the S10 Plus is falling behind. Whilst both the OnePlus 7 Pro and the P30 Pro are actually capturing the details inside this well-lit building, the S10 Plus is just making it a blown out mess. The 7 Pro is at least keeping up with the P30 Pro. That's kind of amazing and super surprising considering that this is one of the P30's main selling points. Okay, so just before I talk about nighttime photography, let's take a quick look at the specs of each smartphone's camera. All three phones have a primary camera, with the OnePlus as being the highest resolution. In terms of ultrawide, you've got the Galaxy S10, which has the widest ultrawide lens. And then in terms of telephoto, Huawei has the maximum zoom five times versus two times and three times. Also, only on the Huawei, you've got a fourth time of flight camera for assisting with portrait mode. As soon as we dive into nighttime photography, the Huawei P30 Pro really starts to come into its own. It creates, generally speaking, the most well-rounded image, the one with the deepest blacks, but also the brightest whites. It creates a super high dynamic range picture, even when there's barely any dynamic range in the actual environment. Huawei also adds a healthy dose of sharpness, which is not always a good thing, but it usually helps in these nighttime scenarios. Take a look at the brickwork on the floor in these images. Now, to be clear, all three are actually really decent night modes. The OnePlus 7 Pro has been a massive improvement over the 6T. The Galaxy S10 Plus is the first time Samsung has actually introduced a dedicated night mode feature. But in most scenarios, Huawei is ahead. And for starters, it's actually the only one of the three that can use its ultra-wide lens while taking night mode photos. And on that note, it's actually the only one that can use its zoom lens as well, which, as you can imagine, with 5 times zoom capability, makes a game-changing difference. But there is one point worth addressing. Whilst the Huawei is undoubtedly the more flexible camera at night, when there is a decent amount of light in these night mode shots, it doesn't necessarily capture more detail. In fact, its noise reduction algorithm is so powerful that oftentimes it smooths out the edges even more so than the other two phones. When it comes to flash, OnePlus has the most powerful flash module, although sometimes that can result in a bit of overexposure. 
you'll see the S10 Plus has a slightly green tinge to it, and the Huawei more on the warm side. Daytime photography is where Huawei starts to fall behind, and the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, I would say, takes the lead. The images between the OnePlus and the Samsung, though, are not too far apart, but Samsung adds a really nice dose of saturation that brings a warmth to images. In this image, you can see that Huawei is struggling to balance both the dark water and the bright sky, but the OnePlus and the Samsung have pretty comparable high dynamic range capabilities. The differences are more just in how the image is presented and the color processing. The P30 Pro's photos have a high contrast look to them, this slightly grungy industrial aesthetic. You might like it, you might not. You'll notice again the differences in the field of view of the ultra-wide lenses, although it's not as stark as the differences when taking video, because of the way the sensor is used. But it is still enough of a difference to mean that the Galaxy S10 Plus can often fit a whole building in that the P30 Pro struggles with, and that the OnePlus has no chance with. Oh yeah, and take a look at the P30 Pro's image here. Even though I've purposefully set that phone to its natural, smooth colour option, when you go to that ultra-wide camera, it just dials the contrast up. All right, let's talk about zoom. So these three photos were taken with each phone's main camera, and these three with each phone's telephoto. You can see that OnePlus's three times zoom gets you a fair bit closer to the subject than Samsung's two times, with the P30 Pro and its five times optical zoom way in front. If you then push each phone, if you force them to adopt 10 times magnification, you kind of get the result you'd expect. P30 Pro in front, then the 7 Pro, then the S10 Plus. If we try again with this image here, you can see that OnePlus and Samsung, they have a good level of consistency between the colors of their main camera and their telephoto cameras, but neither of them can come close to just the detail the Huawei captures when zooming in. In terms of macro, the Huawei can get quite a lot closer to subjects and still retain focus on them, compared to the S10, which in itself can do better than the OnePlus. Portrait mode. The OnePlus 7 Pro takes amazing portraits, but it is a little bit annoying that it uses the telephoto lens, so you have to take a couple of steps back every time you want to do one. I think Huawei's high contrast look kind of works here, although if you look at the buildings in the background, it doesn't really create a smooth transition between them and the sky. What about straight up raw detail? What about if you wanted to take a photo, print it out, and just blow it up as big as possible? It's gonna be Samsung. Samsung captures almost in every scenario slightly more texture than the other two. Samsung also, generally speaking, takes better quality front-facing video. Its 4K resolution completely smashes the other two phones' ability to take 1080p only. Having said that, if you wanna take 4K video on that camera, you're gonna miss out on stabilization. The other two phones with their 1080p footage will be more steady. Also, Huawei's AI HDR kicks in here, and you can see it's the only phone that can correctly expose the blue sky in the background. For taking selfies during the day, there isn't a huge amount in it, but generally speaking, I would side with the S10 Plus. Because it has a secondary depth sensor on the front, the portrait mode especially looks as good as the portraits from some phone's rear cameras. Don't underestimate the OnePlus though, in some cases I would say it does outperform the other two, and it's clearly a massive improvement over the OnePlus 6T last year. All three can capture a fair bit in one frame, so they're going to be okay for a group photo, but not quite as good as the Google Pixel 3's front-facing ultra-wide camera. What surprised me is that as the light starts to fall, the OnePlus slowly emerges as the best selfie camera amongst the three. Whether you're taking standard selfies or portrait mode selfies, it consistently beats out the S10 Plus and the P30 Pro. And finally, a bit of a mouthful, but if you're taking front-facing video in low light, then Samsung is slightly ahead of the OnePlus, which is a fair bit ahead of the P30 Pro, which is a complete mess at this point. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, I've got plenty more tests coming, so it would be massively appreciated if you could subscribe to the channel. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.